Chairs No Waiting, episode number 699. It's real. The Mayberry's Patrol Car. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weaver's and check out the new Mayberry tea towel. That's right. You can get a tea towel from Weaver's. It's got all kinds of Mayberry cool stuff on it. And folks, do not miss out on this because we have the coming Thelma Lou, my journey to Hollywood, Mayberry, and beyond. Both hardback and soft cover books by Betty Lynn. Head over and check it out. The release date's in uh, July 29th. So head over to WeaversDepartmentStore.com and check it out. Oh, it's going to be big, guys, and I want to talk about that for a real quick second. Betty's book, I have the soft cover here in my hand. We have hardcover versions. It's uh, going to be a really cool book. I definitely want to encourage you to go get it. Uh, Jim Clark and Tim McAbee, McBee, I'm sorry, McBee, helped to write it. And, and man, there are some amazingly good pictures in this thing. Definitely want you to go out there and get you a copy uh, because it's not just the pictures. All these stuff. Let me just read the, the back cover for you because this is, I really think you're going to love this. Betty's birthday is the 29th of October. And, you know, we lost her in the past year. And this book says this, uh, it says this, long before becoming a beloved by generations of Mayberry fans for her portrayal of Thelma Lou, the ever-present sweetheart of Barney Fife, Kansas City native Betty Lynn lived a life filled with interesting adventures and fascinating people. In her own words, augmented by 140 rare photographs, Betty shares the sometimes bittersweet, often surprising, and always inspiring story of her remarkable life. From her wartime service in India and Burma to sharing the spotlight with entertainment royalty from New York to Hollywood, Betty always remained grounded in her Midwestern values and strong faith. There's more, but get get the book. I mean, this is really, it's uh, this is absolutely going to be a great book for you. Uh, the release date is August. August 29th, if I said July, I'm getting a note here from Mrs. Weaver saying August 29th is release date, not July. <laughs> so if I said that, I was incorrect, but it's coming up in the next couple of weeks here. So you can order them pre-ordered from Weaver's and get them now. There's both a hard copy and soft cover. I think I'd probably like to get the hard cover. Anyway, there's some really cool stuff over at Weaver's. I definitely want you to check it out. This one's really cool too. There's a there's a Mayberry tea towel. I mentioned this already. I sound like I'm doing just commercials, but as a Mayberry fan, I am trying to show you things that are talk to you about things that are really cool that uh, Weavers has. Go and check out it over at Weavers. And that's a long commercial. I'm sorry about that, but uh, I'm a fan just like you are, right? So when I see things I really like, I think you would too. I know Weavers sells them. My wife runs Weavers. You know, I'm telling you that right up front. But these are things I think Mayberry fans are really going to love. So, all right, let me move on from that. I just I just wanted to share it with you because I, I had not really seen the book until today. I've seen it. It's been here at the house, but we can't ship them until the 29th. Uh, but I started looking at it. So, oh, my goodness, this is – anyway, <clears throat> let's move on. <laughs> so this episode is called It's Real uh, Mayberry Patrol Car. The Mayberry Patrol car. So the reason I did that is because this this week, actually, I got an email from Brian Schaefer. He was headed out to Melody Ranch in California. And he tells me, he says, I'm uh, friends with the folks that own Melody Ranch. And uh, you know that they have a, a real on-screen Mayberry Patrol car there. And he was offering because he's going to be visiting. He offered to do some stuff for us. So, wow, guys, this is really cool. If you've seen the Mayberry Man movie, again, uh, if you haven't, you need to go see it because I think it's worth it. You would see uh, some pretty cool things, I believe, uh, in that movie. And one of them is supposed to be the real Mayberry patrol car, right? So that patrol car is actually it's in the movie is actually one owned by Terry Varvel. Uh, he has that patrol car. And in the movie, it it is, uh, there's we find it out in a studio lot, and it's in really bad shape. Uh, so if you're watching the video version, you're seeing some behind-the-scenes shots 
that I took with my cell phone when we were filming this. Because <laughs> as I said, I'm a big Mayberry fan. So when I'm doing these kind of things, I, I'm excited uh, about it. So this was fun. It was all dirtied up and everything in the movie uh, so that it would look like the like a real Mayberry scorecard. It's just been sitting at this studio for years. Well, so the really cool thing was that we got uh, uh, emails just this week uh, from, like I said, from Brian, and he sent me these. Let me show you this because this is absolutely, this is really cool. So uh, they're the real Mayberry squad car that's located in at Melody Ranch out in California. Uh, he's got pictures of it. Now, it is in really bad shape, uh, but it was a real car that was supposed to have been used on the Andy Griffith Show, according to everybody uh, that's talked about it. Okay, so there's there's a the real car is setting at Melody Ranch. And it's, it's a, it, well, let me not tell you about it. Let me let you listen to the owner, one of the owners of Melody Ranch, Tell us about the car. Go ahead. Um, Brian, this is one of the cars that we acquired from a motion picture company that serviced the motion picture industry for years. And uh, he was selling off a bunch of cars. And so we bought this police car and several other cars. And he told us this is the one they used in, in the Mayberry police car and the Andy Griffiths show. So we took it up and we had it in the museum. And we, we were going to kind of want to get back to where we want to restore it right back to the original condition. And uh, this is a beautiful car, Ford. And then, uh, do you so know what got, year it is? It's probably a '61 or '62. And of course, that's not the same light bar, but no, we changed that one there. They didn't have that part of that uh, gumball in there, or the, or the little ones. But we had that old light from different shows, so we put it on there. Very and nice. This is what was sold to us. It's uh, one of the original cars. All right, so there you go. So that's from out at Melody Ranch. Now, Melody Ranch is out in California. If you guys have never been out there, uh, I've been able to go to Melody Ranch before. They It's a working studio where they still film things at uh, Melody Ranch. And it's it's out in, I'm sure I'm not going to say it right, but it's, it's in the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right. And it's... Uh, it's definitely a place you can go and do tours of the place. And it's really a lot of fun because it's an old West. They have old West town and everything uh, there. And that's what uh, I was able to go and do. They filmed some of the current West world season one and two, they filmed them at Melody ranch. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood, uh, Deadwood, there's several things, just recent things that have been filmed there along with a multitude of, of shows like the Lone Ranger, Wyatt Earp, Gunsmoke, Hopalong Cassidy, Annie Oakley, all these old shows as well. So it's definitely something if you're in the area, you might want to go and check out. But they have the It's Real <laughs> Mayberry Squad Car right there at the thing. Now it looks, if you've seen the Mayberry Man movie and you're not able to see what we're talking about, uh, because I'm showing images and pictures of this. It looks about as in bad a shape uh, or worse shape than in the Mayberry Man movie squad car looked when we were seeing it all dirty and everything. Because uh, in the Mayberry Man movie, it was uh, very dirty and had uh, you know, all kinds of uh, leaves and everything all over it. It looked in really bad shape. Well, the sadly, the real the one that we believe to be a real car. I think it's a 62. It has the dual headlights on the front. I can't see the back, so I'm not really quite sure. I'm not a car guy particularly, but I know it's not a 63 because I have one. <laughs> but uh, definitely something uh, worth seeing. And wow, Brian, thank you so much for sending that to me. Uh, he said uh, uh, he hopes people don't de bash the car because it doesn't look in good shape. It's not been taken care of. Uh, it wasn't near that bad when he had when Brian said he had seen it about six and a half years ago, but uh, he promises uh, there uh, it's Andre is his name promises that they're planning to do a full res restoration, and they're then they're going to place the car in their museum. 
So it's definitely uh, it's definitely something that's going to be cool to go see when they finish it and get it working like it was. Now, if you're looking at the pictures, by the way, uh, there's a tan car kind of sitting to the, uh, if you're looking at it, to the left of the Mayberry Squad car. You can see the rear end of it. That tan car is actually Clint Eastwood's car from Dirty Harry. So just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to post these pictures online on our Facebook page so that you can see them. Or if you watch the video, you're able to see them already. So congratulations. All right. So I, I, I thought this was pretty special. I want to thank Brian for taking, again, taking the time to not only take some pictures, but do a little bit of a video for us and send it to us so that we would hear in their own words, the owner of the car telling us they believe this is a real car now i've always heard it was a real they had a real card at melody's ranch this has been one of the rumors forever and so i don't have any reason to believe that that's not the actual one of the real cars the one of the only one that we believe is still there now there, it still looks different so if you see the pictures it doesn't look like the sheriff car it's still painted black and white but what they were saying in the in the interview you heard uh, the light on top, there's actually three lights. There's the big red light in the middle, kind of like it was before, but there's two small red lights on each side of that light. Like you've seen those in television shows as well, but that's because this was a working car. They used it at this studio to film other things. So they would redress the car uh, so that it could be a part of the film. So it's exciting to me to know there's a, it's real car, uh, you know, I, I love the one in the uh, Mayberry Man movie. It's real. Yeah, they yell it out. It's real. But it is actually not the real Mayberry squad car. Uh, but uh, but but we think there is one. So thank you again, Brian. Thank you for doing that. I'm sure all the fans out here, we all love it. So, all right, guys, let's go. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a little bit of trivia. Then we're going to hear from Spirit Walker. And then if there's time... I don't know how many of you guys have noticed in our show notes for the last several weeks, there's an article linked in there uh, from a farmer's telephone uh, company to co-op uh, that they did about me. I might read that. I feel very uh, strange reading a story about myself. That's an interview of me, uh, but there's been some people who have asked about that link and, and was I going to talk about it? So uh, let's go and display some trivia first, and then we'll decide whether I'm going to embarrass myself by reading a story about me. I feel, let's talk about me. Can we just talk about me? You know, that's, that's what, so let's play some trivia. Everybody ready? Let's go. All right. Question number one. Question number one. Everybody got your pencils and paper ready? Everybody's ready? All right. Pencil, here we go. Question number one. True or false? Warren was from Raleigh. Warren was from Raleigh. True or false? True or false? Warren was from Raleigh. The answer is... That's false. That is false. Warren was not from Raleigh. He was not from Raleigh. All right, question number two. Who said cock a doodle do? Who said cock a doodle do? <laughs> it's so hard to read these without trying to do the voices. Who said cock a doodle do? All right. The answer Who said cock a doodle do? <laughs> it was Barney. It was Barney. All right. So, folks in the chat room are getting it. <laughs> Does it help if I read it like that cockadoodle do? <laughs> it was Barney. All right. Uh, question number three. All right. This is a good one. I don't think I knew this one. Who strung up a stop sign at passing cars? Who strung up a stop sign at passing cars? Hmm. I don't know this one. I didn't know this one. Jim Cheryl's in our chat room. He, let's see if he knows it. Because I, I can't confirm or deny the answer. Who strung up a stop sign at passing cars? Uh, there's folks getting it, so this must be right. The answer is, who strung up stop signs at passing cars? It was Ernest T. Bass. 
Nurse T. Bass did it. I didn't know that. That's a good one. All right. Number four. All right. So we know Warren wasn't from Raleigh. So what city was Warren from? What city was Warren from? Okay. What city was Warren from? Oh. Wow. Folks are getting this in the chat room. I didn't know this. Let me give you let me give you some hints. Was it it was it Phoenix, Atlanta, Morristown, or Boston? What city was Warren from? He was from Boston. He was from Boston. I didn't know that. He's my nephew, and I didn't even know that. That's terrible. All right. Question number five. True or false? Andy and Goober were cousins. True or false? Andy and Goober were cousins. True or false? Andy and Goober were cousins. The answer is, no, they're not. They're, that's false. That's false. All right. Number uh, six. Number six. Why did Barney and Gomer go to the Rimshaw house? Why did Barney and Gomer go to the Rimshaw house? It's probably because you wanted to get that print off the wall. Of Mr. Rimshaw. <laughs> Which, of course, you can get you one at Weavers. More commercial. All right. Here's the here's the final chance. Why did Barney and Gomer go to the Rimshaw house? To find a baseball. To get, get Opie's baseball. All right. What was the wattage light bulb? Or what wattage light bulb did Barney use in his room at Mrs. Mendelbright's? <laughs> what wattage light bulb did Barney use in his room at Mrs. Mendelbright's? Mm. Let's go. How you, all right. This is, this is a good one. Bulb snatcher. All right. I'm going to read it one more time. Give you the answer. What wattage light bulb did Barney use in his room at Mrs. Mendelbright's? It was a 75 watt bulb. You know, you're not supposed to have a 75 watt bulb. You're, it's supposed to be 40, 40 watt bulb. Nothing higher. All right, number eight, our final question. Number eight. Who was not related to Andy? Okay, I'm going to give you a list. Who was not related to Andy? Aunt B, Barney, Warren, or Opie? Who was not related to Andy? This doesn't seem hard. Who was not related to Andy? Aunt B, Barney, Warren, or Opie? <laughs> This is even a fair question. If you watch the show, if you don't watch the show, you, I guess it would be hard. All right, who was not a real? Who was not related to Andy? Well, let's see. Aunt B was his aunt. Barney was his cousin. Opie was his son. That leaves Warren. All right, guys, that is it. How did you do? How did you do? Did you do good? I hope you did good. All right, so that was eight questions of Mayberry Trivia. Congratulations. Hope all you guys enjoyed it. It was a little fun. Now we got a returner. We haven't had a report for quite a while, so we have returning to Mayberry, returning. So we're so glad to have Spirit Walker back with us. So Spirit Walker, take it away and give your report of returning to Mayberry. Won't you turn on the Andy Griffith Show? Forget all your cares and woes. Sit back, relax, and laugh with friendly folks you know. Take up your fishing pole. Welcome to Returning to Mayberry with special correspondent Spirit Walker from the Andy Griffith Show Esquire Club. Thanks, Randy, and hello, Mayberry Spirit Watchers. Welcome to an undisclosed location somewhere deep within the bowels of the Andy Griffith Show Research Laboratories and Teleport Complex. Me and the boys at the lab have been working on the Mayberry chain, where we're trying to connect all 32 episodes of season one together from actor to actor to actor, all the way to episode 32 
and then connect an after from episode 32 back to episode one, essentially forming a Mayberry necklace. Let's take a look at our chain so far. We've linked the first 16 episodes using 29 different actors. We started with Frank Ferguson, who played Wilbur Pine in episode one, and we ended with Elvia Allman, who played Henrietta Swanson in episode 16. So let's pick up from there. Also in episode 16, the beauty contest, appearing as the winner of the contest, Miss Irma Bishop, was Lillian Bronson. In 1962, Bronson appeared in an episode of Ben Casey entitled, among others, A Girl Named Abilene. Also appearing in that episode were TAGS alums, Mabel Albertson, Denver Pyle, Charles Thompson, and Charity Grace, who appeared as the witch hazel loving Jennifer Morrison in season one, episode 17. Also in episode 17, Alcohol and Old Lace, appearing as everyone's favorite barber, Floyd, was Howard McNear. In 1960, McNear appeared as Mr. Bixby in an episode of The Ann Southern Show, entitled A Touch of Larceny. Also appearing in that episode were future TAGS alums Charity Grace, George DeNormand, and Jesse White, who appeared as Fred Boone in Season 1, Episode 18. Also in Episode 18, Andy the Marriage Counselor, appearing as Fred's wife, Jenny Boone, was Claudia Breyer. In 1960, Breyer appeared as a religious woman collecting money in the opening scene of the movie Elmer Gantry, starring Burt Lancaster. Also appearing in that movie were future TAGS alums Harry Antrim, George Caesar, George DeNormand, Ralph Dumke, Charles Horvath, Colin Kinney, Norman Levitt, Matthew McHugh, William O'Brien, John Quaylen, Max Showalter, and Hugh Marlowe, who appeared as record producer Mr. Maxwell in Season 1, Episode 19. Also in Episode 19, Mayberry on Record, appearing as one of Mr. Maxwell's investors, but we know him best as George Sapperly, was Bill Irwin. In 1962, Irwin appeared as Joe Walters in an episode of My Three Sons entitled The Kibitzers. Also in that episode, playing Max, was Burt Mustin, who appeared as Judd in Season 1, Episode 20. Also in Episode 20, Andy Saves Barney's Morale, appearing as a townsman, was Sam Harris. In 1953, Harris appeared as a man in the hotel lobby in the movie Dream Wife, starring Cary Grant. Judy, Judy, Judy. Oh, sorry, I should have closed my eyes. Judy, Judy, Judy. That's better. Also in that movie were TAGS alums Les Tremaine, Steve Carruthers, Lillian Culver, Dabs Greer, and Dan Tobin, who appeared as Gentleman Dan Caldwell in Season 1, Episode 21. Also in Episode 21, Andy and the Gentleman Crook, appearing as the lovable town drunk, was Hal Smith. In 1970, Smith appeared as Reb Canfield in the TV movie The Boy Who Stole the Elephant. Also in that movie were TAGS alums Parley Bear, who played another mayor, Mayor Hancock, Robert Earnhardt, Dabs Greer, and Betty Lynn, who played the adorable Thelma Lou in Season 1, Episode 22. So there you have it. From Lillian Bronson in Episode 16, to Charity Grace in episode 17, from Howard McNear in episode 17, to Jesse White in episode 18, from Claudia Breyer in episode 18, to Hugh Marlowe in episode 19, from Bill Irwin in episode 19, to Burt Mustin in episode 20, from Sam Harris in episode 20, to Dan Tobin in episode 21, and from Hal Smith in episode 21, to Betty Lynn in episode 22. We'll continue more of our Mayberry chain in our next installment of Returning to Mayberry. I hope you'll tune in. But if you have your own suggestions for links that you'd like me to make in the future, you can drop me an email at tagsrl55 at gmail.com. That's the Andy Griffith Show Research Laboratory 55 
at gmail.com, and I will entertain your links in future episodes. Right now, I'd like to take just a second to thank some people for spreading the Mayberry spirit. I always end my segment with keep spreading that Mayberry spirit. And this is an example. Back in June, my house was struck by lightning and caught on fire. Um, No one was hurt. We didn't lose a whole lot, but we did lose some things. And certain fans of the Andy Griffith Show that watch this podcast that are in the chat room probably right now sent me a couple of items. They contacted me and sent me, first of all, a couple of ties, a couple of nice ties. This one is one of them, which I absolutely love. I love this tie. They also sent me something very special. They sent me a coat hanger from the Betty Lynn estate. And the reason they sent this, it may seem like a small thing, but it's a big thing to me. It means two things. First of all, it's important to me because this belonged to Betty Lynn. And I just ended this segment with Betty Lynn. How appropriate is that? Great lady. This was one of her coat hangers from her estate sale. Not a very big item, but very meaningful to me. Secondly, it means a lot to me that someone from the chat room, someone from the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club sent me an item because those hangers were handed out at a Mayberry meetup in Mount Airy, North Carolina, and they wanted me to feel included. Isn't that spreading the Mayberry spirit? So thank you, Lydia and Goober Fife, for what you're doing to spread that Mayberry spirit. Thank you very much. Until next time, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And keep spreading that Mayberry spirit. I thank you. All right, everybody, back on the truck. It's so fine to spend some time with all these dear old friends of mine. Have a bottle of pop. Ah, uh, that was so nice. So remember to email him at T-A-G-S-R-L-55 and uh, let him know what you think, guys. That is so nice of Lydia and Goober Fife. Uh, if you look over my shoulder while I'm filming uh, the podcast, if you're watching the video, you can see one hanging uh, right over there too. So it's a uh, that was uh, a special gift to have because it was one of Betty's actual hangers. I, I realize that seems kind of unusual, but I, I agree. And wow, that almost brought tears to my eyes when uh, Spirit Walker was talking about the Mayberry Spirit and people sharing it like that. So thank you to the fans of this podcast for Spirit Walkers fans for doing nice things for people. I know you do it all the time and uh, it really means a lot to people. So thank you. So, all right. So I think we've got a little bit of time here. I'll do a little bit. There, is, there was a recent article. Let me do a little background music here uh, while we're doing. Let's do this one. There we go. So there was an article they did and it was called the Farmers Telephone Co-op Connected Magazine is the name of it. And it, uh, it actually was about me. So I feel like Ernest T, let's talk about me. Okay, we talk about me. You talk about the weather. <laughs> Everybody has a Mayberry. And it talks about Henniger Native living the dream as Floyd the Barber, tribute artist. It was originally intended to be just a one-time thing for me, for Alan Newsom, Assuming the look and persona of a lovable, absent-minded character known as Floyd the Barber on the iconic Andy Griffith Show, in 1994, he went to May- Mount Airy, North Carolina, to celebrate and entertain fans during Mayberry Days. Never in his wildest dreams could the Henniger, that's Henniger, Alabama, that's where I'm from, by the way, the Henniger native imagine his life would still revolve around a show and its revered town barber almost three, three decades later. That kind of hurt to read that out loud. Woo, three decades later. Not only has he returned... Uh, to the Andy Griffith show, Andy Griffith's hometown of Mount Airy for every Mayberry Day celebration since his first, but knew some signature role as a Mayberry Barber tribute artist took on a life of its own, having given him or taken him to 17 states for show themed special events and festivities and festivals. Most recently, he participated in as a focal figure in the 2021 documentary Mayberry Effect as well as the independent film Mayberry Man, which hit theaters last September 
and began streaming on Amazon Prime in October. In Mayberry Man, Houston plays himself, a tribute artist named Alan. Quote, it was a stretch for me to play a game night, a guy named Alan, uh, who does Floyd, but I believe I pulled it off. End quote. He said with a laugh. I should have laughed, shouldn't I? <laughs> the documentary uh, features snippets of an episode of Newsom's weekly podcast, Two Chairs No Waiting. In helping to tell the story behind the immense popularity of the Andy Griffith Show, Newsom, a 1984 graduate of Sylvania High School, points to his Sand Mountain upbringing as one of the factors that led to his affinity for all things Andy Griffith. He enjoyed watching the program as a child, but turned into a quite a super fan while studying electrical engineering at Auburn University. Thanks in large part to his college roommate and fellow Sylvania grad, Rob Jones. Quote, Rob got me started watching and paying attention to it. Uh, I was an electrical engineer and I'm not that super smart. So it was a lot of stress for me to try to work my way through engineering school. So it was really good stress relief just to pop some popcorn and sit down and watch the show. And that's how I got hooked. Newsom said his weekly podcast discussions about life in the fictional Mayberry often led him to draw parallels of his childhood days. Quote, I've always said one of the things that makes the Andy Griffith show so realistic for me is I grew up in a place like Henniger. Uh, there were church ladies that I knew who were very much like Aunt B and her friends. And there were a lot of farmers around who were like characters from the show, like Rafe Hollister. You know, I know there were people like Ernest T who live around there, too. Uh, you'd run into them sometimes. The show also has a realism to it that I think I think is the reason that it stayed around, that it has stayed around for so long. Definitely, Henniger was Mayberry for me. His roots run deep in the small town, and he has lots of memories involving family and simple pastimes. My mom and dad owned a store there in Henniger at the crossing called Stone's Department Store. We ran the store and sold fabric and shirts and clothes and shoes, all kinds of stuff. I would hang out there all the time. Uh, I also hung out at my grandpa's uh, garage beside the old Henniger post office. I used to go there and play because they had tires for sale, and I'd crawl through the middle of the tires from one end of the rack to the other. And I used to beg to operate the car lift. <laughs> I did. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I never did anything any more exciting than that, though. I was pretty tame as a kid and pretty much kind of like Opie, I guess. I'm appreciative that I got to grow up in a little town. Uh, there's more of it, but uh, that gives you the gist of the story. And it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate the, uh, Laz. Uh, he, he wrote the story. Uh, and, uh, you know, just so happens to be uh, married to one of my cousins. <laughs> no, pay no, that was just straightforward. There was no favoritism in that article whatsoever. So not to worry about it. Anyway, there is a link in the show notes and there has been for several weeks because I've been not reading this and thinking I might, uh, but I just didn't feel comfortable. It's, it's weird reading a story about yourself. That's kind of weird, uh, especially for your own podcast. So. Anyway, if you'd like to read the little bit left that I didn't read, you can head over there and check it out. You can look at the pictures. It's on pages uh, 8 and 9 of the, the PDF file that you'll find there. So you can go and check it out. So I think that is all I have for us tonight, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, sorry for the self-promotions there at the end. And maybe I did a little bit too much Weaver stuff at the beginning. But I'm, I'm really excited about these things. You guys need to get these. Uh, this is really cool, this tea towel. You know, these are things, you know, people hang on their, I don't know, hang on. Uh, I see them hanging all the time on the handle for the oven. You know, that's where they are or hanging, you know, that, so, and these are all Mayberry things on here. So it's really cool. Anyway, I'm getting started again. So let's get out of here. Uh, folks, it is so good to have you. Thanks again. I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415 or email me at Floyd at imayberry.com. Thanks to Spirit Walker for being back, and I want to thank Randy Turner as well, because we didn't know Spirit Walker was going to do his report this week, so Randy had prepared one, uh, but we're going to keep that in the can for when we need it. So he's got a couple 
ready to go. So thanks again to Randy. Thanks to Spirit Walker. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, I look forward to spending some time with you. I'd love to hear from you uh, because next week's our 700th episode. I kind of like to have thoughts from you. So give me a call at 888-684-8415. And we will see you guys next week for episode number 700. 700. Have a great Mayberry week. Good night, everybody.